Hola mis amigos, ¿cómo están ustedes hoy? I said I wasn't gonna say again hello guys, so good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time you are watching me. Today we have a direct application for the uh, determination, which is a real life application by the way, the term, determination of the centroid. Uh, this uh, architect wants to build this wall, and the wall is like that. In this way and of course you know that you have wind applying applied to that wall and somehow you have to do two things first you have to calculate a well here we don't have to calculate the area but you could do that also because we don't know the area of this one for several purposes even for budgeting calculating the estimate you need to know the area of this wall so let's include here also the area and at the same time, what is the centroid of that in order to calculate the wind load acting on, on the centroid for simplification of some numerical calculations that you have to do. So the first step is the same. You start like integral of x dA divided by the integral of dA and your y bar is equal to the integral of y dA divided by the integral of dA. Because one of the questions, and even if it's not one of the questions, I, I, it's easier to solve the, most of the time it's easier to solve the integrals independently. So let's start with the solving the integral of dA. For solving the integral of dA, remember, the first thing that we have to do is decide how are we going to create our differential of area and how we're going to run this shape with that differential of area. Here it's pretty straightforward because, you know, if you're going to measure the distance in x like that, then your differential of area is going to be in this way. The centroid for that differential of area is always at the center, right there, of that line. This is the centroid of that. So this distance, once again, is the x over there. And my differential of area is this one. So if you want to know the differential of area, the differential of area is going to be this height, this height, multiplied by this distance and this distance remember is the x now this height here is basically limited by this line which is y equal 2 plus 0 0.02 x squared and this line which is y equal 0 so once again is this point minus this point what is this point well this point is defined by this so my differential of area is going to be 2 plus 0 0.02 x squared minus this point, but this point is 0, so I'm not even going to copy 0 here. Multiply by the x. That's my differential of area. If I want to calculate my integral of the differential of area, is that, and I am measuring it from 0 to 10. From 0 to 10. 0 to 10. And then we solve this, and this is going to be equal to 2dx is going to be 2x plus, this is going to be when we do the integration, x to the third divided by 3, so it's going to be 0 0.02x to the third divided by 3, and everything is evaluated between 0 and 10. When we do that, our area is going to be 2 times 10. Why 0 to 10? Because it's 0 to 10 in this direction. 2 times 10 plus 0 0.02 times 10 to the third divided by 3, which gives us an area of 26.6 periodic what units? Well, meters and meters. So if we're talking about area, the final unit should be meter square. And we have the area for that wall. Now, according to that area, we start calculating our estimate for materials, for labor, etc., etc., etc. Second. Second is location of the centroid. Well, I need this integral then. Integral of x dA. The integral of x dA is going to be the integral of x multiplied by dA. By dA was this. 2 plus 0 .0, 0 0.02 x squared dx from 0 to 10. So when you do this integration here, then you get 
uh, 2x squared divided by 2 2 yeah because this is 2x when I do the integration it's gonna be 2x squared divided by 2 and this will be 0 0.02x to the third that means that when I do the integration it's gonna be 0 0.02x to the four divided by 4 and this is going to be from 0 to 10 when solving this then this and this cancel out so this is going to be 10 to the square plus 0 0.02 10 to the fourth divided by 4 and then this is going to be equal to 150 which it should be cubic units because this is xda so it should be then cubic units and when I calculate my x bar my x bar as we said here is the integral of xda divided by the integral of dA but the integral of xDA is this one and my area is 26.6 meters square and this and this cancel I have only one meter there so that means that my x bar or my position for the centroid in x is 5.625 meter perfect no problem. Now, we have to calculate also and determine the position of the centroid in the y direction. How do we do that in the y direction? If we follow the same approach, then I have to come in this way. And I say, okay, this is going to be my y, and my x is going to be in this direction, my differential of area. But this is not true because if this is, uh, well, you can do it like that, but then your limits of integration have to go between this line and that line, and that is a huge, huge, huge problem for you. So instead of doing that, we can use the same differential of area. Look, if I use the same differential of area, which is this one, the only thing that I have to know is that the centroid, when I, this y as this x the same, is the distance up to the centroid of this differential of area. When we measure x, if this is a differential of area, I don't care too much about, or, or yes, I do care, but what I'm saying is, basically, this distance x is measured up to the centroid because this is just a really thin line. And when you measure this y, actually, you have to measure it from here up to the centroid. This is going to be the y that you have to measure if you use the same differential of area. So by using the same differential of area, if this is the differential of area, this is the y that I have to put into this equation, and I keep the other values the same. So how do we do that? Well, that y, that y is going to be this divided by 2, because this is just a line, it's going to be at the center of that line. So this y is going to be the total divided by 2. So it's going to be 2 plus 0 0.02x squared divided by 2. And my differential of area, I can use the same one that I used before, which is this one. 2 plus 0 0.02x squared dx. That's my differential of area. Now, notice again that my limits are not going to change, my integration limits, because I'm using the same differential of area. And if this is my differential of area, this is the, this is the, the running that I have to do for the area. Now, if I change it now, these are going to be my limits. But if I keep the same differential of area, this is going to be my limits between 0 and 10. So then I have to calculate my integral of that weekly y dA from 0 to 10 which is no other thing that the integral from 0 to 10 of this, I'm going to take this 2 outside, and this is going to be 2 plus 0 0.02x squared, this part, times dA, which is this part, 2 plus 0 0.02x squared, dx. And then you solve for this, this is the square of the first one, this is 2 squared, meaning this is going to be 4, so one half the integral from 0 to 10 of 4 plus 
2 times this times this, so for 0 0.08x squared plus the square of the second, 0 0.0004x to the fourth dx. And then you solve for this, and this is equal to 1 half, and this is going to be 4dx, which is, when you solve it, it's going to be 4x plus, and this is going to be x to the third divided by 3, 0 0.08x to the third divided by 3, plus 0 0.004x to the fifth divided by 5, and everything has to be evaluated between 0 and 10. When you do that, this value, which is the integral of y dA, is going to be 37.3 cubic meters again. So remember, our definition for our y bar is the integral of this y, weekly y dA divided by the integral of dA. This we just calculated, 37.3 cubic meters divided by my differential of area that we, the integral, which is the area that we calculated before, 26.6 periodic meter square, and that implies that your y position of the center of gravity is 1.40 meters, and your x position from before was 5.625 meters. And this is the information that we were looking for. That means that now you can come here and place your centroid. This is 5. 5.6 is somewhere like that. And 1.4 is going to be somewhere, I don't know, 5.6, somewhere around there. That's going to be the location of whatever you are looking for. Uh, this is not a scale. So if it was a scale, it should represent a little bit more, but then this is the location of the centroid. You see, in this particular case, it, it was easier to use the same differential of area for both cases, but there are some cases that using the same differential of area for X and Y are more complicated, and it's your job to determine which one is going to be the easier way for doing the problem. See you in the next video lectures, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good day.